Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Destroying a fruit-bearing tree. You have a lemon tree, an almond tree, an orange tree, or any fruit-bearing tree of the like in your backyard, in your front yard, anywhere in your property, or in an area that you would like to make your property. Is it permitted according to halacha to destroy the fruit tree to get rid of it, or are there restrictions applicable? So there are two halachic issues that are discussed regarding the destruction of a fruit-bearing tree. The first being the Baltashchis prohibition, and the second being a mystical danger involved for one who does so. And we will address now both of these issues. The first issue of Baltashchis. It is an Isser Minatayra for one to destroy God's creations that are able to be used for a purpose. This is formally known as the prohibition of Baltashchis do not destroy, do not waste. Accordingly, the Paiskim rule that it is a biblical prohibition for one to unjustifiably destroy a healthy fruit-bearing tree due to the Isra of Baltashchis. And therefore, first and foremost, we can already conclude Allah Lamaisa from this, that it is forbidden to destroy fruit-bearing trees without justifiable reasons that are viewed justifiable according to Allah. So is understood from the Yalta Rebbe in Hilchus. Shmiras Gufa Nefesh Baltashchis in Halacha 16 through 17. And so was ruled in the Gemara and Bavakama, Bavabasra, Makis, Psachim, in the Rishainim and Achreinim. Now, while the Apaiskim will question this assertion and say that perhaps there is no Baltashchis prohibition involved in destroying a fruit bearing tree, practically we do not rule like this opinion, as we explained. Now for the second issue. The al Rebbe continues in states based on the Taz and Rav Chanina Bava Basra 26a that in addition to the biblical prohibition about Tashkis that we have established in unjustifiably destroying a fruit-bearing tree, there is also a danger involved in doing so. This prohibition and danger applies whether one is in Eretz Yisrael or in the Chutz Laaretz and applies irrelevant to who the owner of the tree is or even if the tree is public property. So whether it's owned by a Jew, a guy, or the public, such as in a forest, there is a prohibition of Baltashchis and danger involved to destroy a tree unjustifiably. Now what is this danger? So while the Paiskim don't go into detail, it is obviously referring to a physical danger to oneself or one's family, chas v'shalem. And it can be explained based on what's expl- written in Kabbalah, that every tree contains a malach. And a fruit bearing tree contains a special malach for fruits. And when one damages that tree, one isn't just damaging an inanimate item, but is starting up with those mazalas and malachim that are appointed over the tree. And I can assume it's quite dangerous to start up with angels. So now that we've clarified and established the two, pa- the two issues involved in destroying a fruit tree, unjustifiably, we now need to determine what are justifiable reasons for doing so. And indeed, the Paiskim list a number of justifiable reasons for which it would be allowed to destroy a fruit tree. However, prior to commencing on the list of permissible cases, we must first clarify the following point. While it is clear that when the Paiskim write that there is a list of cases in which it is permitted to destroy the tree, this means that there is no halachic isra of Baltashchis involved, otherwise you can't say it's permitted. Nonetheless, possibly, there still may be a spiritual and mystical danger involved, even in those cases that Baltashchis isn't involved because you have a justifiable reason. And indeed, this matter is debated amongst the Paiskim. While some places can maintain that when we state that there are permissible scenarios in which a fruit tree may be destroyed and does not contain Baltashchis, so too there's no danger involved. So is the opinion of the Alter Rebbe and many other Achreinim. Nonetheless, other places can rule that even in cases that you're allowed to destroy the tree because of justifiable reasons, and there's no Baltashchis involved in doing so, there still maintains a danger to do so. So rules the Sheilas Yaivitz and many other Achreinim. An argument of the opinion of the Alter Rebbe and those who ruled that way. 
practically the suggested approach in such cases in order to avoid the danger according to everybody is to simply have a guy chop down the tree hire a gentile let him do the job don't get yourself into a possible danger this would apply even according to those who generally follow the Alter Rebbe's rulings who as we've already stated does not hold of any danger being applicable when you have a justifiable reason to chop it down nonetheless in practice one should try to get a gentile to do it to suspect for the stringent approach so was understood from a letter of the rebbe nigris kaidish volume 7 page 264 an answer to an individual who chopped down a tree with justifiable reasons and nonetheless damage happened to him now this allowance that we said to have a gentile cut down the fruit tree and hence avoid the danger according to all is only in the case that indeed you have a heter to do so due to justifiable reasons and therefore there's no baltashchus involved however in the event that you don't have a justifiable reason that will be explained then it remains forbidden due to Baal Tashchis and due to Sakana for a Jew to have it cut down even by a guy. So rules Shivim Tvar in 52.16 and Paiskim and Darke Tshuva 116.51 and the reason is as this follows the general rule in Taira that it is forbidden to ask a Gentile to do something that's forbidden for a Jew to do due to Amira Lanachri. So now that we've clarified the final directive, even in those cases that one can justifiably destroy the tree, that it should be done through a Gentile, we can now go ahead with the permitted cases, Emir Tashem coming up in part two of this halacha.